intense interest taken in the first demonstration of Cinemascope in Britain was proved by the number of exhibitors, film executives, technicians and equipment makers who gathered on three successive days at 10 o'clock in the morning to witness the new process. And here at the Odeon Theatre Tottenham Court Road, they were welcomed by the 20th Century Fox president and almost literally put into the picture. And it was a very much bigger picture. The present restricted screen in an empty theatre looks like this. Cinemascope enlarges the width so as to give a panoramic view such as the human eye normally enjoys. The secret lies in a special lens fitted to the camera which compresses a panoramic picture to ordinary film width. And then a compensating lens on the film projector expands it again in the theatre. Mr. Scurras, with his research director, Mr. Sponnable, had seen this lens in Nice at the home of Professor Henri Chrétien, its inventor, and recognised its great potentialities. During World War I, a French astronomer named Henri Chrétien developed a wide-angle viewer for tank operators enabling the crew members to see a 180-degree view of the battleground. His invention wasn't used in cinema until after the war, in 1927, when director Claude Antoine Laura decided to use it for his film to build a fire. Sadly, this invention was only picked up again over 20 years later when 20th Century Fox purchased the rights to the Cinemascope widescreen aspect ratio technique. The development of cinema anamorphic widescreen was due to a shortcoming in a non-anamorphic spherical widescreen format. With a non-anamorphic lens, the image's full width fits within the film's frame, but its height is cropped. Therefore, a massive part of the image is wasted due to the widescreen cropped format, which the projector masks out. With the development of anamorphic lenses for cinema, this problem was fixed. By deliberately stretching the image across the entire negative, it creates the wider field of view while retaining sharpness once the projector compressed the image back down again. Once the image was viewable on the big screen, it was clear why filmmakers started to opt for these lenses. Not only did you get a wider field of view, but the optics inside gave anamorphic lenses its characteristic oval bokeh and beautiful streaky horizontal lens flares. But there was a problem. While these lenses created beautiful imagery, they were heavy and incredibly expensive. Cook S4 lenses used in films such as John Wick, Harry Potter and 12 Years a Slave would fetch upwards of $40,000 a set. In comparison, Panavision doesn't even appear to be in the lens selling business at all. The steep price tag attached to anamorphic lenses limited the scope of use to only a handful of high budget film studios. Crushing every indie filmmaker's dream from getting oval bokeh wide aspect ratios and lens flares that would make Michael Bay drool all over his director's chair. Well, until now. The Suray 50mm f1.8 anamorphic lens, built with the same aluminium alloy found in an aircraft chassis and features a 10-bladed D-clicked aperture with a long focus throw reminiscent of high-end cine lenses. All that together and you've got a 560 gram spaceship that produces a stark cinematic look.
I managed to get my hands on the first shipment to arrive here in South Africa. After a long delay due to lockdown regulations, This batch is so new, in fact, it still has demo unit written on its side. While the lens's size may seem unimpressive by some, it produces a 241 aspect ratio and a whopping 33% increase in the horizontal field of view. So what you get is an APS-C equivalent of a 37.5 mm lens. The wide aperture of f1.8 enables the user to shoot in low light and show off the beautiful oval bokeh that sets anamorphic lenses apart from your standard kit lens. The large throw of the manual focus ring will make sure you can smoothly fine tune focus while imagining yourself to be the next Larry Nielsen. All of this for a mere $700. But, unfortunately, if you own a Canon or Nikon DSLR camera, you're out of luck. These lenses are made specifically for Micro Four Thirds, Fuji's X-Mount, and Sony's E-Mount. Even if you find an adapter that would suit your Sony a7 III, you'd still be forced to shoot on APS-C mode to avoid vignetting. And if you were planning on any close-ups, the minimum focusing distance of this lens is 0.85 meters. Meaning you'd have to be at arm's length at least before you'd be able to focus. If you can't afford to spend $700 on this lens, there are cheaper alternatives. Screw-on anamorphic filters proved to be quite popular. However, when compared to anamorphic lenses, the difference is clear. When using the right lens at a wide open aperture, anamorphic filters do give pleasing results. But some might argue that you're still adding an extra layer of glass in front of your lens, which could result in a softer image. But for a $10 filter, it gets quite close to the real thing. Suray has opened the doors for all indie directors to create beautiful looking imagery using their new anamorphic lenses, available at a fraction of a cost. The same kind of imagery they watched in cinema growing up while dreaming of becoming filmmakers themselves. It's a beautifully designed lens that I'm sure Henri Chrétien would have approved. From a lens design primarily used to spot the enemy in tanks, to being utilized in high budget Hollywood films, Anamorphic lenses sure have come a long way, and with today's technology becoming more and more accessible, it makes me wonder what kind of impact this lens will have on the film industry. Now, with Suray announcing a new 35mm anamorphic lens, will the accessibility of their lenses flood the market and cheapen the anamorphic aesthetic? Or will it realize a young filmmaker's dream?
Special thanks to Sunshine Company in Cape Town for lending me the lens to review. Sunshine nor Sure did not sponsor me to create this video, so I was able to give you my unbiased opinion of this lens. If you like this review and would like to see more of these types of videos in the future, please drop a comment down below and remember to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.